When playing a line like this, I only need four ingredients. These are the four most important scale exercises you need to know. Learn the scales fitting the chords. Learn to play the scales in thirds. Learn the triads of the scales. And learn the seventh chords in the scales. Here's why and how you do this. On each step of the major scale you have a chord. And you can fit a scale to each chord. And when you look at the most standards, the chord of the standards always fit the major scale. For example, checking out the first eight bars of Autumn Leaves, all the chords in the scales are represented. And of course, all the scales in the major scale are also represented there. You fit the scales from in the scale on all the chords of the tune, which means you're going to know what scale fits each chord. And this is of course in relation to the chord notes. <laughs> Check out this exercise, I've marked all the chord notes in the scale. In this way it's easy to relate the chord into the scale. And by only playing this material, playing from chord note to chord note, you can get a really fine solo on any standard. Of course, it's quite easy to just mash through the scales like this, up and down, but this does not really help you. So put in the work on adding the scales into the music, adding the scales to the chords where they fit, and work on knowing the chord scale relationship. <laughs> Playing thirds in the scale is maybe one of the best technical exercises there is. <laughs> The in the scale constantly forces you to change the direction where your fingers move up and down, up and down. In comparison to when you play the scale, you're only moving your fingers up or down. You do not change the direction or interchange the ups and downs. And that was the technical part of the thirds in the scale. And when you're playing any line, you want to hit certain target notes, the chord notes. Here I'm hitting the B on the third beat. But before that B, I play that third, the A and the C, leading towards that B. So the third interval becomes an enclosure. And of course, you can argue that this line is a one, two, three, five pattern. But unconsciously, you will need to play those thirds. And if they are already in your fingers from training the thirds in the scale, the enclosures comes much easier to you. In these examples, you see how I play the third interval as an enclosure. Here the B and the G leading to that A. And in this example, the E and the G leading to that F. Using one of John Coltrane's favorite phrases is always a pleasure, and this is the thirds in the scale. Playing thirds in the scale and that last third is the enclosure to the next tone you are going to play. So what you are actually doing, playing any third runs down the scale, and when you want to switch, you switch to chord notes or your scales or your rests, but then you hit that target note that is lying in between that third interval. On this G7, I'm just playing a few third steps up and hitting that B. And remember to add the third intervals to the tunes you are playing. Here I'm adding the third intervals to the first eight bars of Autumn Leaves, playing thirds on the two first beats. In the lesson manual this week, I've added all the exercises and all the licks and made a lot of etudes on Autumn Leaves, how you can apply all this into the music. Find it on Patreon, the link is in the description. Triads are everywhere in jazz. And it's really great to know them up and down the scale like this. But when you know them like this, as the upper structures, you really have an advantage. So know the upper structures, so know the tries in this form. Do the same on the G7, add up those tries and see what upper structure tries you have on the G7. And of course you should do that on the C major 7, actually you should do it on all chords. And you have probably already discovered that some of these tries on the chords does not really fit. They are not extensions, but they are suspensions. 
Suspensions actually lead into the chord you are playing, so use them like that. What I really want to emphasize here is that you need to know the triads in relation to the main chord you are playing. Know what triads gives what chord notes, what are the extensions and what are the suspensions. <laughs> So that you know when you're playing an E minor on a D minor 7, you get the 9, the 13 and the 11 extension. And when you play a D minor triad on the G7, you get the 5th, the 7th and the 9, a great extension on the G7 chord. And when you play that E minor on the C major chord, you get the 5th, the 7th and the 9th extension. These are really great upper structures to use. Two ways you really need to know your triads is with a chromatic step in front of it. Practice this up the scale like this. Or the triad descending with a chromatic step in front of it. And of course you should take this through the scale like this. Then there's the triad as a passing chord. Where you can use the triad leading into a new chord tone or a new target note. It's a little bit like when you're using the third interval. But you're just adding an extra third, getting a triad. Getting the sound of the enclosure. Seventh chord. I tend to use seventh chord all the time when I'm composing and playing jazz phrases. These are really the basics of all jazz. <laughs> of course you should know your seventh chords up and down, from the root and from the sevenths, but I think this is really important. <laughs> Learn your seventh chords as upper structures to the chords you are playing. Elevate that seventh arpeggio away from the root that you get a an higher and nicer sound, that you get a lighter jazz sound. For example, if you're playing C major 7, you play that E minor 7 as the upper structure, getting a C major 9. When you practice your seventh chords, make sure you add additional rhythm, like this. <laughs> Adding the 16 notes into the 7th chord. Or adding that chromatic passing tone in front of it and playing it as a triplet. Please practice the 7th chord using these two rhythmical forms. Of course you should get all the licks, all the exercises and all the etudes in the lesson manual on Patreon. Everything is written out in all 12 keys so you can get a great start in the key you want. The Patreon link is in the description. Coltrane Parker and Michael Brecker gives amazing practice advice but you really need to interpret what you are hearing. Check this video for lots of practice advice from these great saxophone heroes. Play music, have fun. <laughs>